Could Joe Biden be removed from office? It's July 1st, 2024, and these are your headlines. Texas's own Representative Chip Roy has filed a resolution urging Vice President Kamala Harris to assemble the cabinet and declare President Joe Biden unfit as commander-in-chief. And the resolution, which was filed on Friday, comes after President Biden's, let's say, shaky performance during the presidential debate with former President Donald Trump on Thursday night of last week. Biden appeared to struggle cognitively, alarming Democrats and Republicans alike who questioned his ability to perform the role of president and commander-in-chief. When a president's unable to fulfill the duties and obligations of office, Section 4 of the 25th Amendment triggers the process that enables the vice president to become acting president. In an interview with conservative political commentator Glenn Beck, Chip Roy said that people have known about Biden's decline. He told Beck that those of us who follow politics have known that President Biden has been diminishing, that he's been demonstrating his clear incapacity and inability to carry out the powers and duties of the office. He said he thought the debate put it on full display in a way that was much more apparent. Well, Chip Roy characterized Biden's performance as a clear demonstration to our enemies, which resulted in a weakened and endangered American people. He said, we have seven months, at least, under President Biden and a potential of longer if you let him run for re-election, he happens to win. We should right now focus on the fact that he's unable to faithfully discharge the duties that he's been empowered to do as commander in chief. Now, amid speculation of possible replacements for President Biden, New York Times reported that Some of his allies are calling for President Biden to consider stepping down after the appearance at the Thursday's debate. Texas A&M Chancellor John Sharp has announced he will be leaving the role next year at a time when the university has been criticized for its leftward lunge towards embracing radical liberal ideology. A former Democrat member of the Texas legislature, John Sharp was appointed to the position overseeing the Texas A&M system back in 2011, 13 years ago. In an interview with the Soros-funded Texas Tribune, John Sharp said his desire was to always go out on top. Well, as the state legislature has pushed to rein in leftist indoctrination, such as diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at Texas's taxpayer-subsidized universities, Texas A&M, which had long been thought of as a relatively conservative institution, has increasingly found itself right there in the spotlight. Senate Bill 17, which went into effect earlier this year, prohibits Texas universities from hiring employees to perform the duties of a DEI office and is supposed to block the promotion of policies, training, or activities designed or implemented in reference to race, color, or ethnicity. Well, just last year, Texas A&M attempted to hire DEI-promoting professor Kathleen McElroy as the head of its journalism program at their main college station campus, an offer she eventually turned down. And after the university's president resigned from her position over the McElroy scandal, Mark Welsh, who'd been the dean of the university's School of Government and Public Service, was then appointed as interim president. Mark Welsh retired from the U.S. Air Force as a four-star general in 2016, but has faced criticism for his support of diversity, equity, and inclusion principles, his belief in white privilege, and his past position serving as an Obama appointee to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Despite Welsh's support for ideologies that embroiled Texas A&M in scandal over last summer, the Texas A&M Board of Regents appointed him as the new president of the flagship university and college station. Most recently, the university was forced to suspend its Title IX director after Texas Scorecard revealed radical pro-DEI views and his lamentation that the Biden administration's changes to Title IX didn't go far enough in forcing schools to accept transgender athletes. While Sharp told lawmakers at a committee hearing in May that they had removed eight DEI positions, during the same time, the University of Texas fired and eliminated hundreds of DEI and DEI-related positions. Sharp says he will stick around until June of 2025. His replacement will be chosen by the university's Board of Regents, all of whom are appointed by Governor Greg Abbott and confirmed by the Texas Senate. America is at a crossroads. Now, more than ever, Texas must step up and lead the country. We don't have time to mess around. The only way to save America is with a strong Texas. You and I know this, but so do the enemies of life and liberty. Therefore, you and I have no choice but to stand up and fight. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, and to the enemies of liberty, I say, come and take it.
As Pride Month drew to a close at the end of June, and yes, it's finally over, the city of Fort Worth used taxpayer dollars to host an event celebrating sexual identity. The event, hosted on city property, praised LGBT figures in STEM fields, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and featured a performance by Jamie Esposito, who founded the LGBT musical group Spectrum Ensemble. The city paid Spectrum Ensemble $700 to perform a 20 to 25 minute instrumental music performance. According to the Spectrum Ensemble website, the group promotes organizations known to work to transition gender-confused children, as well as other youth organizations, including the Trevor Project and Safe Schools Coalition that promote trans ideology to minors. Esposito's organization also advertises that proceeds from their events go to LGBT organizations. They also advertise and support the LGBTQ plus Victory Fund, a political action committee that supports LGBT candidates. The Victory Fund actively supports many Texas Democrat lawmakers and candidates, including Senator Molly Cook from Houston, who says she wants to bring back abortion to the state. That was like her whole campaign. Senator Senator Ann Johnson of Houston, one of the leaders of the impeachment of Attorney General Ken Paxton, and Lauren Simmons, who successfully primaried the only Democrat in the Texas House to come out against child gender mutilation surgeries. Well, Tarrant County GOP Chair Beau French told Texas Scorecard it's bad enough that the city of Fort Worth acknowledges the Marxist pride movement, but it's even worse when our taxpayer money is spent hosting them. They even went as far as to celebrate the founder of the child general mutilation movement. Texas Scorecard asked the city of Fort Worth why they used taxpayer dollars for the event. A city spokesperson responded, no comment. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.